Hi, my name is Bob O'Brien. I work for the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation and Historic Preservation as an Invasive Species Control Director. I'm here today to talk to you about one particular invasive plant. And I'm standing right beside it. It's Japanese barberry. Uh, many of you may recognize this. Many of you may have it in your lawn. Many of you uh, have seen it at shopping centers, at parks, and also for sale at your local nursery or garden center. So this particular shrub looks fairly harmless. You say, what, what, what can this particular barberry plant be doing to uh, change habitat or to change forest structure? Well, I'm here today to show you exactly that and also to demonstrate how easy it is to remove Japanese barberry and think about replacing it with something more native, something that has just the same characteristics that you're looking for in an ornamental planting, but will not turn our forests into a Japanese barberry understory. So you see this one lone barberry here has a food source, the food source being the berries. You know, commonly bought at lawns, lawn and garden centers, landscape outlets, nurseries, winds up being planted in your yard. These fruits and berries are consumed by birds, animals, and moved into natural areas. These natural areas where these plants flourish under the right conditions are changed forever. Things that might be rare or habitat that might be significant or unique to certain plants or animals is destroyed forever. So it's really important for us to think about how one plant can become an environmental nightmare. So now that the birds and the mammals have consumed the berries off of your one lone plant sitting in your landscape, in your hedgerow, and marching across the street into a forested area, and then depositing those seeds into the landscape, Ten years later, voila! This is exactly what I'm talking about. One barberry planted on your property, adjacent to a natural area such as this supposed chestnut oak forest, which is in serious decline because nothing else will grow here. The barberry is excluding all regeneration of these trees. And therefore, once these older trees grow up and die, there will be no trees here as habitat. There will be no plants or animals that need this habitat. If there are any left at all, with this level of infestation that you see here, very few things that are native would prefer to be in this setting. Japanese barberry does provide habitat, but it provides habitat for not the best things. White-footed mice, white-footed mice carry ticks, white-footed mice carry ticks that have Lyme's disease. We at State Parks take an active role in preserving and removing landscape scale barberry infestations like this to bring back forest health, to allow native plants and animals to move back into forest structure just the same as this. And we're going to demonstrate to you today how easy it is to remove small single row, hedge row type plants as well as give you a look at what a landscape scale removal on a scale of this size looks like post removal and pre removal. So now what you're looking at here is an area where we've cleared barberry using a small excavator. Over a period of two days uh, with a machine, we cleared almost two and a half acres of barberry. Uh, due to the conditions here, it was easily accessible, the ground was relatively soft, and we could get in here with a machine. So we do use mechanical means to remove barberry and infestations such as the one we just left earlier today. Um, we're hoping for a lot more native regeneration. We do have some invasive plants that have also come in and taken some space here, and particularly just Japanese stillgrass. We're hoping to do native restoration here with trees and shrubs. We also have a deer browse problem here, so we'll have to protect our plants from the deer inevitably consuming them. So. It's a long range project, but we have seen a dramatic amount of success here. Hello, my name is Alyssa. I work for New York State Parks, and today I will be demonstrating how to remove Japanese barberry. Uh, in New York State Parks, um, we have field crews that go around, and our most common tool we use is the pickmatic. Um, you can also use a pickaxe. And, um, a regular homeowner, a shovel will work, and we often use loppers or hand pruners as well. Um, 
The best time to remove Japanese barberry is earlier in the spring before the seeds set, so April and May, um, the soil is usually softer. But um, today I'll uh, be showing how to remove even in the fall. Okay, so after you have your tools ready, you really want to make sure you wear gloves. The barberry does have spines and they can hurt. Um, so what we do is we just get right in there, you kind of step on the plant and um, uh, push the branches back. And uh, then you'll start swinging your pigmatic. And what you're aiming for is to make a circle around the root crown, breaking all the side roots and pulling it out. Um, a larger bush can take a long time. This is a pretty small one. Um, oftentimes you'll find longer roots that connect to other plants, at least in a wild setting. And um, you just want to get around the plant as much as possible and pull it out. So as you can see here, uh, barberry has a very bright yellow underneath the bark and on the roots. Um, this is characteristic of all barberries and indicates you're doing the right thing. Um, once you have gotten the bulk of the plant out, you will want to go back and sort of fill in the hole and look for roots or other things that you may miss. Um, the more thorough job that you do with removing the roots, um, the less likely the barberry will be to come back. Before removing Japanese barberry from your site, you might want to connect with your local cooperative extension office and find out what native alternatives would be best suited for your site and your location. Um, they'll have the best information for your area. Um, some general native alternatives would be the blueberry, a highbush cranberry, or a summer sweet. Um, for more information, you can go to the New York State Parks website at nysparks.com.